Hey everyone, thanks for watching Bridgeport Brightest Lights. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my first ever light show right here with a simple Arduino Uno. So the reason I'm making this video is because someone asked in my comments how did I make my first ever light show? This terrible video right here recorded in literally 240p. That's the highest resolution. And they wanted to know how I did it and so that's why I'm making this video. To go over the basics of how the light show worked was I had an Arduino Uno. This is just a simple Arduino Uno. It's a few years old. I think I got it about three years ago. I also had an 8 channel relay that can connect to the Arduino, this is a 5 volt relay and then it allows um, uh, I think 120 or 240 volts, um, it allows up to 10 amps with uh, 125 volts or 10 amps with 250 volts AC and then it also allows DC power. This is what I used and then I also had a box. To store everything in I use this plastic box and there's a hole here and I'll show you why in a second um, I didn't know about all the fancy enclosures at the time and then the main thing that I used was these plugs I highly 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 recommend whatever you do to never set up your light show this way for one it did not work when I did this with the light show I was able to get the lights to work but the audio never worked and for two I'm not exactly sure, but this might slightly be illegal. I'm not exactly sure, but the way that we had to cut into these cords and add these wires, I'm not sure if this is like legal or illegal in the US, um, but yeah. I'm going to be explaining the story of how I made the light show and why it uses all this stuff. So I did not plan this light show out at all. I went to a light show near me called Lights on Jacob Lane, if you've seen the channel before. I've talked about him before, I'll leave a link to his channel up there. I was at his light show and my family has gone there a few times and we've always wondered what would it be like if we could run a light show. So I thought, why not I try and do it at our house. So at the time I had no idea about Falcon controllers or X lights, Raspberry Pis, any of that stuff. All I knew was how to program on an Arduino Uno and I was pretty good at it. I was able to make a fingerprint scanner where you had to scan your finger to unlock my door. I did some other stuff so I was very familiar with this and I was probably better at programming it then than I am now because I haven't used this honestly in over a year. So I'm not, I don't remember all the way how programming on it works, I still know a few things. But my main idea was I could hook this up to a relay, the relay could turn on and off the lights. And then I just use regular Christmas lights because I had no idea even about pixels and I didn't even know how you can make each individual light change. Now, when I started thinking about how I'm going to build this light show, it was near the end of November. It was probably around Thanksgiving time when I started thinking about wanting to build this light show. So I was not prepared at all. I recommend if you want to build a light show, start no later than August. To start working on it and even that is still kind of late so i didn't know how i could get the relay to turn on the lights though and it took a little bit of thinking the lights in the first light show were regular plain christmas lights you could buy from walmart and this is where the dangerous part came in i bought 10 one foot extension cords and these are actually what it looked like before we did anything to them this is an eight channel relay and i only need seven channels because you had four windows, you had the door, you had icicle lights on the fence, and then you had snowflakes. So my thought was each channel could run each section. Now the problem with that is we've always put up a lot of Christmas lights before that, but they've never been programmed. And usually most of them are hooked together so we only need two, maybe three extension cords. But we need seven extension cords running out of the garage to do this, so we had to get extra extension cords. and then. How we did it was we bought one foot extension cords. These are off of Amazon. If I was to redo this, I probably would have bought something a little longer, but I didn't have a ton of money at the time. So these are one foot extension cords. Then what we did was we cut the one foot extension cords and we pulled out the white wire on the inside for each side and then we stripped it 
and then we added extra wire onto it which we bought from Home Depot and then we hooked the wires together with these things um we bought these from Home Depot too these are actually the exact same ones that I bought in the package from these these were extra so those hooked the wire together and the reason I say I would have bought three foot extension cords was it would give me more room so what we did was we took these two ends of the wire and we put them into the relay and then we plugged this into a surge protector the surge protector we were using only had six plugs on it and we need to plug in eight things seven of the cords that went out to the lights and then one for the arduino and we needed an extra surge protector so we had two surge protectors plugged into one outlet and then this would plug into the surge protector and then this would be plugged into an extension cord which ran out to the lights and turned on the certain one and then the way the relay works is it just flipped on or off the electricity here so the electricity would be coming in through one side of the cord let's just say this one and then when you flipped it on it basically connected these two wires together to allow the electricity to pass through and go through the other cords we also labeled them just so we knew which one was which and then when this box came in this is how we held everything in the box basically you could see some screw holes right there right there and then some down here what we did was we screwed in the relay about right there so all the white cords could come out so the actual extension cords weren't in the box it was just the endings of the wire which came in through here into the relay sorry that's not on camera um into the relay and then all the wires from the relay hooked to the Arduino, which we had right here. And then the Arduino cord went out there into an extension cord into the surge protector. And now my hope was that I would be able to turn this into an actual functioning light show. That I'd be able to leave this in here, plug this into here, and then we had a timer, an outlet timer, which would turn on at dusk and then turn off at dawn. Or you could set some hours on it. We were going to use that. And I didn't want to have any other computer out here other than this. And the only problem is, I wanted to sync it to audio, and this has really no way of putting out audio unless you buy an extra board. By now, once we got all of this set up, it was probably about December 6th, December 7th, I think it was actually one of those dates. And I wanted the light show to be running at the beginning of December. Christmas time was coming, so I didn't really know what to do with this. So my only idea that I could think of is connect this to my computer. My computer was running a simple programming website that I use a lot. It's called scratch.mit.edu. It's basically block programming. And I had another board called a Makey Makey. I can't find it anywhere, but basically it's a simple, and I mean very simple board that you don't even need to program. You plug it in and then it has some uh, spots to plug in jumper wires like these. And basically, if you touch the wires together and made a complete circuit, it would push uh, any key you want it to on your computer. So I had the Makey Makey hooked up to this and then this would send out a signal to the Makey Makey and then the Makey Makey would tell my computer to push space. And then when Scratch saw that the keyboard had the space bar push, it would start playing the audio and then the audio had to go out of the audio jack on my computer into a FM transmitter. Now at the time, I did not have this transmitter. This is the transmitter that I used last year for the light show and the year before for the 2020 light show. This is the transmitter I bought. And the reason I bought this was at the time, I didn't have that much money and my parents didn't really feel like spending money on this because they didn't, they didn't say no to the light show idea. They just thought it was a crazy idea so they didn't want to put money into it. This transmitter absolutely sucks. I got it for about $30, has an antenna and a battery, and when you cut the power on this transmitter and you leave it on, when you turn back on the power, the power will turn on for this. So that's not a big deal for this one. With this one, when you cut the power and then you turn it back on, this actually won't turn back on. So you have to hold the power button. And that means every single night I'd have to come out when the lights turn on and push this to turn it on. I had it set to 90.7, and that's where I used every year I was going to use that. But the transmitter also sent out the audio on 90.5 and 90.9. And you could even slightly hear it on 91.9. So this transmitter absolutely sucked. And it barely went past the end of my driveway. So cars could barely even hear it, which was another problem. 
And the biggest problem is, like I said, you need the Makey Makey to tell Scratch to turn on the music. But I didn't want to leave my computer in the cold because every night I'd have to come take it in. There was just so many problems. So, now how did I program the lights? Programming the lights was the absolute worst thing ever. So basically with this, I was only programming seven lights because I had seven things that were gonna turn on or off. And I'm able now to program about 5,000 lights. If I was to make it a quick sequence, I could do it in a day. It took three days to program seven different lights that were gonna turn on and off on here. And the reason was, you need to turn on the digital outputs either on or off. And I had to sync it to the music. So what I do was I'd push a button on here that I attached on here. That would tell the Makey Makey to start playing the audio on my computer. And then it'd start running the program on here. And I basically have to go in, type a bunch of code that said turn output eight, let's say, on for 500 milliseconds. Turn it off, turn on this output on or off and it was the hardest thing ever. I had to copy and paste the code a ton of times, and the code, I guarantee, was over 300 lines long. I can't find it anymore, and I'm really sad about that because I wanted to show how long it was, but it was just the hardest thing to program. And by now, once we got everything figured out, it was about December 20th or sometime around there, five days before Christmas, so I scrapped the project and didn't really do it at all. And the biggest reason why was because I didn't want my computer sitting out there with the audio and the audio didn't work. But I did want to record it so I could put it on YouTube. And I also wanted to show my family. So for one night, I did take out the Arduino Uno, the Makey Makey. I had it all in this box. I had it shut. I had it plugged into my computer. And then for some reason, one of the wires broke or the button broke. And the Arduino Uno was not telling the Makey Makey to start the music. So we couldn't even have music to it to listen to it. And another problem was this using this way had so many problems but basically another problem we had was since the button wasn't working the second you plug this in it automatically had the lights start blinking so I wanted to record it but once I turned this on I didn't have the smart plugs either at the time so I had to manually plug it in once I plugged it in I had about two seconds until the Arduino Uno would start making the lights flash so I'd have to run from the garage, down the driveway, to the end of the road to record it. So in the recording, what I had to do was have my dad, he shut the garage door, he was standing in the garage, he plugged it in, and I recorded it. And I was so shaky because I didn't have a tripod, and cars were coming very fast, so that's why it moves a lot. But the video sucked, and the whole way everything worked sucked, and we still wanted to keep the Christmas lights on. So what we did is there's a normally on and a normally off for each single relay. So I'm not sure which one you had to plug it in, but we plugged this into the one where it needed a signal to turn the relay off. So that way we could just leave the relay in the garage and we could still turn on the Christmas lights. You didn't need the Arduino Uno out there. The electricity would still run through this, no problem. So we left the Christmas lights on, but I completely scrapped this project and it sucked and I was determined to figure out a way to do it next year a lot better and I looked up online and I found out about RGB pixels and X lights and all that stuff and then that's how I programmed the first light show and I also watched a ton of videos on how to make a good video so that's why the quality automatically stepped up from this terrible looking video to the next year having this amazing looking video. So that's basically how the 2019 light show worked and how that's why it never went public. That's why I never announced it or anything. I do not recommend you program your lights like this at all. Maybe if you want to do something where you can have your lights flash, you can use this. But making these were a pain and I just don't recommend doing it at all. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and I'll see you in the next video.